All right. So good evening, good afternoon, good morning, depending on where you are. Um, this is block four, track two um, of Pitapalooza 2021. My name is Todd Carpenter. I'm the executive director of NISO, one of the co-sponsors of the event. Uh, I'm the MC for this session. Uh, we also have some other uh, PIDA winners in the back. Uh, running the chat, et cetera. I want to draw people's attention to the code of conduct at the bottom of your screen. If you haven't taken a look at it, uh, please uh, be, um, be kind, be polite. Um, no party fouls in this session, please. Uh, so we have, uh, I'm going to pitch it to Paul Vierkant, who is uh, going to lead off the session with Danielle Bücher and Isabella. So, Paul, over to you. Uh, thanks, Todd. Um, hello, everyone, and I will pass it on to Daniel, who, who will give us a short introduction. And yeah, uh, yeah, only a, a, a short, um, some short views uh, words. So, um, so our topic will be uh, PIDs in the Dini certificate. And maybe you asked, sorry, what is this? So we come to it later. Um, first, um, some housekeeping things. So please Twitter, uh, uh, use Twitter. We have the hashtag I dream of Dini. I come later, why? And uh, pit party certified. Um, then uh, in, in the tool, you see the um, polls in, in the button. We have some criteria we want to talk about later, and you can vote for it. And Paul will go deeper in the top voted criteria later on. Yeah, give us feedback later on. We have some um, <coughs> contacts and um, Twitter um, hashtags. And if you want, come to stage later, maybe, if you want to say something. And of course, let's have fun, because Paul said, the, uh, the Pitapalooza is a, it's a funny event. So, and this is why um, maybe to lost some words for the I Dream of Dini. Um, I, I don't know, I think maybe the older one of us know maybe um, I Dream of Genie. So this is, um, you know, um, maybe now. <laughs> you know it? Mm -hmm. so. It's it's not bad when not, but it's it's, yeah, it's a little bit older. So, and maybe some words um, um, lost of us. So, but um, Todd introduced uh, us. So, um, Isabella will um, um, shortly say something about Dini in general, and after this, um, Paul will come to the criteria um, dealing with PIDs and our Dini certificate. So. Uh, yeah, me more or less. Okay, we all, all three comes from Germany, and uh, but how our main actor is this is the Dini certificate, and I think Paul exactly at the uh, link in the um, um, in the chat. So I think I will give hand over to Isabella now. So great, Daniel. Thank you so much. Yeah, as Daniel said, it's party time. We just want to go to a concert to, with you. And of course, we belong to the Dini crew. Please follow us backstage now in the beginning because we'd like to introduce to you our playground, the band and our top act. So in the beginning, I'd like proudly to present Dini. Maybe you are not so familiar with it because DINI means Deutsche Initiative für Netzwerkinformation or in proper English, German Initiative for Network Information. Uh, DINI was founded in 1999, so it's an old gal, let's say. It's an initiative of three bigger organi organizations representing academic and research libraries, university and media centers, university media centers and university computer centers. Uh, so that does not sound so much, but actually the initiative is representing more than 150 members, big libraries and so on. So it's 156 to be precise. Okay, Daniel, maybe you can go on. Great. I think 
it's a bit late, of course, in Germany, so I'm not making too many words on the mess, mess, message, mission, mission, he or she, <laughs> problems. Uh, we'd like to go a bit official, so in the beginning, let's quote the official mission statement of Dini, that is, Dini was founded to advance the improvement of the, the information and communication services and the necessary development of the information infrastructures at the universities, as well as on regional and national levels. Or in short, like you can re read it, um, Dini is an active promoter of change in information infrastructure. Information infrastructure. Okay, so how does Dini do that? Um, well, there are a lot of measures taken, just like prices, workshops, conferences, support or um, initiating of uh, projects. But um, the most important for us on this stage, on this, um, well, very stage here, is that Dini, Dini stimulates and supports the development application and further development of standards and, to, uh, and dis disseminates recommendations for the use. I'm sure this, that sounds familiar to you, of course. Um, I bet on that um, because we at Dini are not the only initiative dealing with standards in the information age. And of course, we appreciate that because only we know that only together with other initiatives with other countries, we are strong enough to, to manage the change and to create things the way the, we want them to be. That is consistently Dini members interact with groups and organizations just like DataSide, ORCID, RAW, the Confederation of uh, Open Access Repositories or Eurocris, just to mention the few of them you surely know, but there are a lot of more. So networking is an important aspect of Dini members' activities, and we sometimes are tempted, tempted to, to quote the Blues Brothers and say we are on mission from Dini. I don't have the sunglasses. It's Daniel's time, so maybe that. Um, so what about the Dini lineup or our ecosystem of action? Maybe, Daniel, if you, if you would like to go ahead with the slides. Uh, the Dini work is represented by, by a sort of special crews or working groups, and they are focusing on, as you can read it by yourself, research data, e-learning, current research information systems, interoperable metadata learning environments, VCT, that is video communication technologies, and of course, it's the next slide, and it's about the working group of um, on electronic publishing. This is us. Last but not least, we are a very large and productive working group on electronic publishing, of course. And we guys, um, Daniel, Paul, um, me, and not to uh, forget Thomas Severins, who wanted to join us today, are proud to be the representatives of the speakers uh, or the speakers of, of this working group. Um, we do a lot of things, just like publishing position papers on ORCID, the next one on, on metrics, uh, and we are organizing workshops and do networking like we, we do, well, tonight in Germany. But especially we focus on curating the so-called DINI certificate, our star, our main act, and DINI's main product. So, the DINI certificate. Um, the full name of our rising star is Dini Certificate for Open Access Repositories and Publication Services. Um, well, it's also, well, decent. It's uh, on ASN 2003. Um, we permanently create, uh, uh, it's uh, permanently under revision. So now we have the sixth version of the certificate. It was 2019. Um, usually, it's uh, it's published in German, but um, we also have uh, translations in English and Spanish. And for the time being, there are already 65 certif certificated services, um, publication services, and repositories. Some of them even um, did. Um, um, I reviewed twice or thrice because, of course, 2009, 
uh, 2003 is ancient in um, in digital age. So, um, yeah, we don't only have this certificate. We even have a sophisticated model. Uh, thank you, Paul, for your idea. Um, that is called Dini Ready, and it's it's for hosting services, facilitating the certification process for. Uh, the hosted repositories and so on. So it's a it's a nice ecosystem, um, but what does it contain? What is it about? Um, the aim, of course, is to improve publication infrastructures and to strengthen open access based forms of publishing. It's based on a set of criteria or a catalog consistent of minimal requirements that are obligatory and recommendations. And next slide, Daniel. Uh, the um, the set on cri um, the the criteria are we have eight groups of criteria. That is uh, visibility of service guidelines, um, or policy support of authors and publishers. Sorry, I have to read them. I can't remember. I, I can't. Um, it's a bit difficult for me. Legal aspects, information security, indexing interfaces open metrics and long-term archiving. So, of course, PIDs are an important aspect of the certificates catalog, but where and which PID? And how do PIDs shape the character of the 2019 certificate? Paul will show you. Show you. The floor is yours, Paul. Thank you, Isabella. Um, I hope you all can hear and see me all right. So, um, hi, once again, my name is Paul, Paul Fierkant. I'm uh, the outreach manager at DataSite, and I'm also active in the um, Dini uh, working group on electronic publishing. And as you might have seen on Twitter, I'm also sort of the uh, PID panda, um, having yeah, made these preparatory or introductory um, videos on, on the Dini certificate, because it takes a while to, to delve into the depth of um, of the Dini certificate being a like a 90 page standard um, for open access publication um, services and um, I wanted to um, remind you to cast your vote on the poll that we are running right now uh, so that you can um, you can choose which criterion of the Dini certificate you'd like to discuss uh, first um, some of you have already uh, voted, and I would like to go uh, uh, stick to the first slide that we already that you already can see. And um, yeah, we'll just shortly explain this uh, uh, this recommendation. So, um, as Isabella already said, that the the Dini certificate is is about is about creating a standard for publication services such as repositories or um, or journals, and um, in order to do so, um, we need to define things how things should work to make it interoperable, to make it open, and uh, but also persistent. So um, there, there are within these all these criteria. I don't know actually how many those are. There are not, not like hundreds, but several uh, tens of them. So um, we have um, chosen the seven criteria which focus on persistent identifiers to discuss them. And um, yeah, just feel free also to ask questions in the chat why why we, cho why we chose those um, PIDs uh, within the Dini certificate or any other question you'd like to be, uh, like to be answered. Um, and, and also you can ask uh, Todd to, to call you up on stage if you have any questions that you wanna discuss uh, in person. So we have the first and maybe most obvious one um, that is Orchid. Orchid is a strong stakeholder in the PID community. And we, I guess we introduced that in the last Dean certificate um, or the one before um, that Orchid, the Orchid ID should be a part of the upload form of a publication service. This might sound like a, uh, like a stand, well, well, this is a standard, uh, but we all still have it as a recommendation. We have a two layer, um, certificate, which means that um, um, services need, in order to get the DNA certificate, they need to um, fulfill their minimum requirements. And as you can see, this is just a recommendation. 
And uh, we we are thinking about like within the next version of the DNA certificate, maybe to if a lot of services support the standard or support this recommendation and uh, offer the services that we ask them to, they will then be lift up, lifted up to uh, to be a minimum requirement. And um, so this is currently still a uh, recommendation um, that is that is. Um, that we are thinking about um, making um, compulsory. And an issue that, or why we had uh, still have it as a recommendation is that um, some some um, members of the working group thought that like we put too much pressure on, on institutions uh, um, becoming our, an ORCID member. Although um, we also said, uh, or as you can read in, uh, uh, in the bullet that the the that the ORCID uh, API's authentication function is freely available through the public API, so um, we try to to get this this twist into into this um, criterion in order to to motivate um, also institutions who are not members of ORCID yet to support the standard. So this is a fairly um, uh, new. Um, Criterion, which is still a recommendation, but tends to be a uh, um, minimum requirement soon. And Daniel, maybe you can um, looking at the poll right now. You can maybe um, shift to uh, minimum requirement five point eight. And this is where it gets becomes like this is recommendation is rather a soft um, criterion, which does not necessarily have to be fulfilled in order to get the DNA certificate. And um, now we get to the minimum requirement that if you don't have it, if you don't support it, you won't get the DNA certificate. So we're thinking here about basics um, that every, I guess every um, attendee of the of Pitapalooza would think that this is given fact, but we still need to, need to emphasize uh, the importance of Resolvability uh, and that um, so that um, a persistent identifier, such as, for instance, a DOI or a URN, uh, can uh, has to have a resolver in front of the the uh, identifier, and also to have um, to have the persistent identifier um, in a human readable and also machine readable form. On the website, so that we ensure that both kind of endpoints uh, are met. So um, machine or human readable would be the landing page that uh, every user or researcher can see what they're um, what they're doing and and actually identify the PID itself, but also have the um, the machine readability, um, meaning that the 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 persistent identifier is. Um, provided via OIP mage and um, in Dublin Core uh, uh, in the, within the element identifier. We introduced in the last DNA certificate uh, 2019, we introduced also the um, data side metadata schema as a, re as a um, recommendation because uh, we think that um, just having Dublin Core is way too, too simple. Uh, to describe um, the complexity um, in terms of, of metadata when it comes to describing a, a work, uh, research data, or text publication. So um, we make this a minimum requirement. And as uh, Isabella just said, um, um, over 60 services have so far um, received uh, the DNA certificate or one of the earlier versions. And they all complied with that. And this is a fairly old um, minimum requirement. So it is really important for us as Dini to, to put a focus on, on, on persistence. And this is what we did right from the start. And um, maybe there's a question. Why not in French? Like, I think there is all, also a French version that there had been one, but it's always a kind of a challenge to um, translate all uh, each version into into other languages. So, but I think the uh, 2013 one is in Spanish and French as well. 
And in terms of internationalization, we are thinking about extending the um, Dini certificate to other countries. This is a this is a real challenge because there are some like some aspects of uh, certification that are, cannot really be transferred from one country to another. That is especially the legal the legal issues that you might have with copyright and and all that goes uh, comes along with that. So um, we are now thinking about uh, um, spreading the Dini certificate to Austria, given that we have uh, the same language. But um, this is a real like this is a this is a process that is uh, still um, um, at the beginning. So we are we are not really there yet when in, in terms of internationalizing it on a on a level that would mean that it could be globally um, um, implemented by by every every country because also the the certification process we have reviewers like 30 reviewers who um, voluntarily um, review the service which um, is a process that takes a while and um, yeah therefore we um, we need to have this kind of infrastructure and this um, women and manpower to to um, to supply Dini with the um, with the means to to certify um, certify yes it was twenty ten yeah thanks Isabella twenty ten um, to certify uh, services so um, then um, we could have another a look at a minimum requirement which is five point seven if you Take the previous slide, Daniel, please. Thanks. Um, this is um, also a minimum requirement that um, is basic to us, uh, that every document and every version uh, uh, that is uploaded and published uh, is assigned a persistent identifier. Um, this is, uh, in, in Germany, we usually have uh, DOIs or URNs or handles as, um, and I think also some, some some institutions use ARC, but uh, we we do not make a, we do not focus on on one persistent identifier um, system solely, but we we say that it has to be some sort of a PID that um, our work is assigned um, to. Um, then we have um, another one. I would go to the recommendation 3.7. That's once more about um, ORCID. And this is also what the ORCID itself is asking for to provide information about ORCID because it's essential if you offer or if you implement ORCID that um, you inform the researchers about um, what ORCID is, what are the advantages are, and, what, and also due to privacy reasons, what um, um, Goes along with that. So, uh, if if a service wants to uh, comply with this, th they have to somehow uh, uh, offer information. We suggest that they at least uh, provide a link to the website of Orchid um, on or yeah to the homepage of Orchid. And um, then we could go to the minimum requirement and. 5.6, if there is no other question. Thanks. Um, that also a thing that, that might be um, a given fact to all of us, but um, to a lot of um, services in Germany, it's not because um, this requires always that you have the kind of right platform, software platform, the right um, um, manpower, one woman power to develop such a platform that supports uh, versioning in their system. So um, that we say that um, we require the the services to that any kind of documents or works uploaded that uh, uh, shall not be altered, or if they are changed in some way, then this needs to be considered as a subsequent version and therefore gets another. Um, PID so that every kind of change is tracked throughout the history and um, also the, the 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 PID shall point to the last to the last uh, version of 
of the document or the work itself. Um, then we could go to M5.9. You do a great job, Dania. Uh -huh. Cool. Right. Um, so uh, another minimum requirement works on ODB as, as an exception. We had that uh, early in another session um, talking about whether a PID should be deleted or, uh, be deleted or not, or whether it, sh it should be possible. Um, um, we, we don't think that, um, we at this point think that um, documents, um, um, or this, this points at documents, it doesn't really point at um, PIDs themselves, but um, the documents can in certain, uh, under certain circumstances be deleted um, because for instance, if there is um, the, um, a case of a criminal offense or something like that, that needs or that urges the institution to take it offline uh, the document or the the research data, so um, but then still the PID would remain online and um, but the document itself should be uh, inex inaccessible in the, those cases, and but this should be the exception and this should also be made clear in the um, the policy of that of that publication service, be it a, um, a repository or a journal. So um, then we might get to the last last um, requirement, which is six point six, um, which might sound a little bit redundant to what we had at the beginning with Orchid, uh, but it's still um, uh, uh, a little bit slightly different because we then open it up to um, to the whole range of author identification. We put a focus on ORCID because uh, in Germany um, there there is also a, a research project or a project that assists the promotion of ORCID in order to foster the um, the spread of ORCID amongst German academic institutions, which is fairly um, successful. Uh, this kind of a project assisted approach of ORCID um, having now a consortium of over 60, 63 institutions. Mm, and this is why Dina also said, well, we want to focus on ORCID as a standard for author identification. And um, but in addition, we want we want to also stress the importance of of norm data um, um, in in the field of author identification. In Germany, we have uh, also the Gemeinsame Normdatei, which is the in, in integrated uh, authority file. Um, by the German National Library, which is also closely linked to, to the ORCID ID. And um, we want to stress the importance that, that norm data needs to be um, implemented within those, those uh, services. So um, I think if um, there are not any, like I'm now through with my, um, with my, um, criteria. The next slide would be hold my beer. There is an important criterion missing that I'll add as a question myself. Uh, I haven't seen any questions so far. So I guess uh, either we were convincing or you were uh, already uh, sort of um, happy with the with the whole presentation. <laughs> if you haven't figured out yet what PID stands for, it stands for Paul, Isabella and Daniel. And if you want to know more about the Dini certificate, either you can tweet um, using those hashtags that you see at the bottom of the the presentation. And um, oh, nice, nice one, Anthony. Um, and um, if you have any more questions, like, or if you want to have, for instance, uh, the the question about uh, French, the French Dini certificate, introducing the Dini certificate into France, uh, we are open to any discussions. Uh, uh, leading to that because this is the the idea behind it. We want to improve the PID world or the world of open science services in general, so that um, all institutions, all people can um, profit uh, and researchers can profit from from the idea of PIDs. So please um, get in touch with us, and um, yeah, we we will we will help you. Thanks a lot. <laughs>